Well, welcome, everybody. Today is a special Sunday. My name is Fawn Boss. I'm the Women's Director here at New Hope. And today is Pastors Appreciation Sunday. And I'm glad you're all here. Welcome. And we would like to welcome any visitors, any new people. Um, a little disclaimer if you're a visitor, this is not a normal Sunday around here at New Hope for us. Uh, we take a, a day once a year, and this is it, where we um, show our pastors how much we appreciate them and love them. So we're gonna, you're going to see some things you might not expect to see in a church. So we're just asking you to, to be grace-filled, and if you go home, talk to your friends and neighbors. Don't say that's the craziest church I've ever been to. Come back next week and give us a chance to see what we're like on a normal Sunday, okay? But if you are a visitor, um, please feel free to fill out that card that's in the pew in front of you. And we promise we're not going to come, you know, uh, knock on your door or show up at your work or call you or stalk you. We will just send you something in the mail that explains about who we are and, and some of the services we have offered here at church. And again, we hope you come back next week and visit us again. So everybody, welcome. We're glad you're here. It's my privilege right now, today, I get to do life in the church, and needless to say, it's probably going to go a lot quicker than it usually does. Um, hey, 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 hey. I'm still in the room. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> the most important thing for life in the church I'd like to talk about today is we have a very special birthday girl in the audience. Hazel Wright, raise your hand. Raise your hand. Where are you, Hazel? Hazel? Hazel, if you stand up, there you, isn't she beautiful? Hazel celebrated 95 years young yesterday. 95? That was 90, yeah. I just love Hazel to death. She's my role model. I want to be just like her when I grow up. And I would not believe in a million years that she was 95. She's just 90. beautiful. 90. That's, that's why. Sorry, well, who told me 95? That is not mine. Somebody told me 95. You still look great. That, the five years not taking anything away. You still look great, and you're still my role model. I love you dearly. Um, also tonight, we still have Little Hope Church at 6 o'clock over in the bridge. Um, you're not necessarily getting a sermon today. Wah, wah, wah. But you will get one tonight if you come back at 6 o'clock. Mark Addis is going to be continuing their... Um, series on Acts and the Legacy of the Church. They're great services, so if you haven't been, come check us out at 6 o'clock. And the only last thing we have for this week, and, and sorry, before I go on, your bulletins have all of our regular what's ever going on during the week with the Bible studies and everything, so please check those out. But we will still have tickets on sale today and next week for our Harvest Blessing. Now, about 25 years ago, two local churches merged and had a baby, and that's New Hope. So we're 25 years old, and we're going to celebrate on October 29th at 5.30 at Classic Catering, and there's still tickets left, so if you don't want to miss this wonderful evening where we talk well, about our past and celebrate us, um, go out and get your tickets today, after services, or next week. Um, I think that's all for our announcements. At this time, I'd like the ushers to come forward, please, as we take our tithes and offering. Thank you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for this day, and we're so grateful for all that you do for us. And Lord, we ask your blessings on this service today as we honor our pastors. Um, we're very grateful, God, that you sent this group of men to us to serve you and to lead us. And even though we're going to have a lot of fun in here today, God, we pray that they leave here at the end of the day knowing how much, as a church, we love them and how much we appreciate them. But above all, when we're honoring them, God, today you get the glory. We honor you most of all because we love you. We love you for everything you've done for us, everything you continue to do, and everything that we know that you're going to do in the future because you said you would and you are always so faithful, God. We thank you for this. At this time as we receive these gifts that we're about to receive, Lord, we ask you to bless them and, and help us continue to be the good stewards we are for all the blessings you give us. To, to be able to show your gospel and your kingdom work throughout our city of Clovis, our nation, and even the world. And we thank you for these, for these things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, finally we're here. We're ready to start. And it is my distinct pleasure to introduce to you our MC for the day. Would you help me in welcoming 
my partner in crime and the guy that's going to help me keep these guys in line, John Longstaff. Thank you. For those of you that were expecting Corey this morning, I apologize. I'm a last minute fill in. Corey is home ill. So uh, if we can add uh, Corey to our prayer list, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, I, again, would like to welcome you this morning and appreciate you all being here. It's a blessed experience for us to have you. If you've been here for any period of time, you understand what Pastor Appreciation Sunday is all about. They hate it. <laughs> but we're going to have some fun today. And I'm going to ask you a favor to please participate. And it's going to make some sense once we get into this what I mean by participation. So is everybody with it? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Should we call the pastors out? What do you think? Yeah. Might be a good idea? Okay. Joining us today all the way from Clovis, California, <laughs> is the Guardian of Eternity team. Mark Addis, associate pastor. Gil Hernandez, missions pastor. Steve Brown, pastor and director of senior ministries. And our own pastor emeritus, Lonnie Pops Rowland. Since we're all coming clean this morning, I need to admit something, that this morning is based on some movies that I've not seen, so that will become extremely evident as we proceed. <laughs> if you've seen the hit movie Guardians of the Galaxy, you'll recognize the plot. Peter Quill and his fellow Guardians are hired by a powerful alien race, the Sovereign, to protect their precious batteries from invaders. When it's discovered that Rocket has stolen the items they were sent to guard, the Sovereign dispatched their armada to search for vengeance. While non-believers might think that our Sovereign is as unexplainable as the mysteries of aliens, these pastors know it ain't so and have dedicated their lives to guarding precious items as well, God's church. Now look carefully, if you will, at the poster up here. Pops is Groot. Mark is Star-Lord. Gil is Drax, and yes, Steve is on the other poster because he ditched the fate of the faithful crew and crossed over to the darker side, <laughs> so he's going to be pop sidekick this morning, okay? So let's hear it for the Guardians of Eternity. And from behind the wing, which you found out is not soundproof, is the fate of the faithful team. Let's welcome Rich Smith, counseling pastor. Chris, we call him Christopher the Bishop, Bishop, youth pastor. And finally, our senior pastor, Tim Rowland. Yeah! <laughs> now, the other big hit this year was The Fate of the Furious, a sequel to the Fast and the Furious movies. This new movie has Dom and Letty married, Brian and Mia retired, and the rest of the crew exonerated, as the globetrotting team has found some semblance of a normal life. They soon face an unexpected challenge when a mysterious woman named Cypher, always a mysterious woman, forces Dom to betray them. Now they must unite to bring home the man who made them a family and stop Cypher from unleashing chaos. 
Now, these pastors on both teams, I will tell you, know nothing about a semblance of a normal life as you saw. Don't let your babies grow up to be pastors. But they're always up for uniting the others in Christ, who through him and all will become family and have a home. So once again, let's look at the poster, and what we're going to see up here is Tim as Dom, Rich as Hobbs, Steve as Deckard, and Chris as TJ. The only question I have is, where do these guys put their muscles on Sunday? Because it's a little bit different photo op. So let's hear it for the fate of the faithful. I'm told we have some rules that are going to be popping up on screen because we've got a biblical game that's going to go on this morning. And I'm going to step over here because I can't read it that close. Am I blocking sufficiently over here? So as we wait for the rules, Rules. Each team will be asked a question. Then they can, number one, answer the question as a team. Number two, use a lifeline. And that consists of phoning a friend, ask the audience, or 50-50 where Pops and Fawn will eliminate two of the choices. That's all for a possible $100. Third is the lightning round. It's every third question. This is where anyone can ring their bell at they can ring their bell at any time, but they must answer the question immediately. And four, there's bonus points. Except for the lightning round, after all questions, the answer screen will appear with the correct answer and the scripture verse. Is this as clear as mud for everybody? Okay, good enough. This is where we test their sword drill skills. The person to find the scripture verse the fastest in the Bible, not on their phone, Ring the bell and read the verse, and they will earn 50 bucks. Those are bonus bucks, of course. Fawn will be keeping score. Take a drink, dip, dip, dip. Take a drink, guys, and don't cave. When Christians suffer because of their faith, how are they to react? A, by being ashamed. B, by being surprised. C, by praising God. D, by cursing God. No pressure, guys. C, our final answer. Final answer, by praising God. Oh, how fortunate you both are, all three of you. Oh my gosh, that doesn't surprise me. Pastor Roland. Oops. You too. You too. You have a fitting man's son. Whoa, 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 whoa. We have a decision to make here. I think we have a DQ here. Have you seen his muscles? Yeah, I know. <laughs> whoa, 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 he wasn't on the page either. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Excuse me, please leave all decisions up to the judges. <laughs> Yet, if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. Amen. Amen. Okay, question number two is for the faith of the faithful. Faithful. According to Proverbs, who are the reward of old men? 
A. Wives. B. Livestock. C. Servants. D. Grandchildren. Final answer, D, grandchildren. <laughs> now this is requiring me to have to check now, but, okay. <laughs> Pastor Tim. Proverbs 17, six, children's children, are the crown of old men, and the glory of children are their fathers. Proverbs 17, 6. Amen. <laughs> kind of knew he'd get back at us. <laughs> and the bonus question is... <laughs> Premature ringing the bell could result in disqualification. <laughs> Just a warning. You're asking the wrong person if I'm going to make a decision on this. What was the last plague of Egypt? A. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's okay to ring now. They just have to wait till the words come up. Isn't you it? You talking to me? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, that's what I'm saying. You just have to wait for the words to come up. And I want to read. I want to read the answers. Uh, you can after and who? So you rang it over here. No, actually, Tim. I think. Oh, okay. Quick draw here. What was the last plague of Egypt? Pastor Roland. Death of the firstborn. We have B, death of the firstborn. What two cities are both called the city of David? A. Bethlehem and Hebron, B, Hebron and Jerusalem, easy for me to say, C, Bethlehem and Jerusalem, or D, Hebron and Bethany. Guardians of the Eternity. We can have participation here, folks. We would like to phone a friend. We're going to use a life phone. Do we need that on speaker? choices are A, Hebron, Hebron, or B, Hebron and Jerusalem, or C, Bethlehem and Jerusalem, or D, Hebron and Bethany. Can you help us? I don't think it's A, I don't think it's B, I think it's Bethlehem and Jerusalem, C. Would that be your final answer? <laughs> Thank you so much, Judy. <laughs> so, C is our final answer. C, Bethlehem and Jerusalem. Ah, we have a winner. <laughs> yeah, is that first or second? Good question. Ooh. 
If it's first, I have first. Let's go with, let's see if it fits. Samuel 5, 7. It doesn't fit. Let's... <laughs> Just in case, we have a backup. Let's try 2 Samuel 5, 7. Nevertheless, David took the stronghold of Zion, and the same is the city of David. That makes way more David's sense. <laughs> And is the it? Next verse is important too, but that's all right. Is anybody curious what 1 Samuel 5 7 says? I think we have an audience that's curious. And when the men of the Ashvod saw how things were, they said, The ark of God of Israel must not remain with us, for his hand is hard against us, against Dagon our God. Wow. I thought we didn't have that question. <laughs> Wow. Okay, the next question. Next question for the faithful or the fate of the faithful. King who? <laughs> How did King A reward Mordecai? A. Royal robe, crown, and horse. B. Money from the royal treasury. C. Ten sheep, two oxen from royal livestock. Or D. Royal maidservants. Still have three lifelines, gentlemen. They would like audience participation. So, audience, what do you think? Okay, thank you. So, gentlemen. We As you can that see, was, that was a big I help. That so, so <laughs> just so you know, gentlemen, the rules state you can either use the answer your lifelines have given you, or you can come up with your own. So, what is your answer, gentlemen? Uh, can, can we do a 50-50 now? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. okay. Like a yeah, you're the senior pastor. What do you want to do? The rules state. <laughs> the rules state during a 50-50 that pops will look at the answer. He will eliminate two of the answers and leave them with two to choose from. So Pops, what do you think? It says, how did King A uh, reward Mordecai? A, ro royal rob, crown, and horse. B, money from the royal treasury. C, 10 sheep and two oxen from the royal livestock. Or D, the royal maidservants. Which two wrong answers would you like to get rid of? We're getting rid of C and B. We please get rid of C and B from the board. That leaves us with A and D for your choices, gentlemen. I really don't think it was a royal rob. I think it probably was a royal robe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think they're trying to test us And I'm very Seriously, glad. Just so you know, that was just a test of their skills to see yes. how well they absorb. They're paying it. attention. And I'm glad it did not say royal crown. <laughs> We're going to go with A. <laughs> did I hear final answer? A, final answer. And final answer is A. a. Are you sure you want to go with A? I a royal rob. Rob seems like a nice guy to me. <laughs> final answer is A. Bring a royal robe the king has worn, and a horse the king has ridden, one, one with the royal crest placed on its head. Oh, my goodness. Hey, did you guys already minute. turn to Esther while we were answering the question? Don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> So this appears to be the lightning round. As soon as it comes up and you know the answer, you may ding your bells. Revelation 13, 17, no man might blank or blank, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. And I believe that Pastor Rich was seen by herself. Look at this.
Guardians of the Eternity, are you checking out the score here? No pressure, girls. <laughs> Who mourned, O wretched man that I am? Who shall deliver me from the body of death? A. Paul. B. Thomas. C. John. D. Peter. Carefully, gentlemen. The game is in the balance. We want to use our 50 50. 50 50? 50 50. Okay, Pops, you're up again. You need to remove two of the wrong answers. Who mourned, O wretched man that I am? Who shall deliver me from the body of death? A. Paul. B. Thomas. C. John. Or D. Peter. Please remove two of the wrong answers. We'll remove B and A, so your choices, gentlemen, are C or D. C or D, guys. Can they choose from a wrong one? They, they can choose from whatever they want. Any answer. <laughs> We've got some place to be by Tuesday, guys, so... Uh, <laughs> All right, we got we to gotta still pick one that was eliminated. <laughs> you have the choice of any of the answers, eliminated or not. Then we're going to go with A. Final answer is A, Paul. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Now hope that is seen is not hope, or who hopes for what he sees? Who ho ho? Romans 824. Romans 824. Well, that was fun. Okay. <laughs> Next question. The fate of the faithful. According to Micah, what does the Lord require of those who follow him? A. To love the Lord thy God with all their heart. B, to love their neighbor as themselves. C, to honor thy mother and thy father. D, to justify and to love mercy and walk humbly with God. They're phoning for a lifeline. Surely no one in this church is going to have their phone on. <laughs> Getting ready to preach. <laughs> He's yeah. turning the mic on for my next sermon. Sermon prep. Just asked her if she can see the screen. <laughs> B, to love thy neighbor as himself. Uh, C, to honor thy mother and father. Or D, to do justly and love mercy and walk humbly with God. Your first question should yeah. actually be, are they actually getting money? Yeah. <laughs> Assuming there's money. We are on board with that. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. How confident are you with that? <laughs> Real. Real. All right. <laughs> Church that Sunday we preached on. Final answer: 
final answer is D. He has told you, O oh man, what is good and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. Wow, this is getting tight, ladies. This is nice. Lightning round question, here we go. Which disciple said, depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord? That was a muted thing. Do it again. Thank you. Pastor Tim. Hey, Peter. That was lightning. I have no idea how you're keeping score, my dear. Yeah. Permission, permission to go to the next question. How many living creatures were around the throne of God in Revelation 4? A, 3, B, 4, C, 2, D, 5. Blue 32. Blue 32. So is that helpful, guys? Yes. We're going to go with B. Is that final answer? Final answer is B, 4. Oh. Well, before, during, and after the screen came up, he was dinging. <laughs> Revelation 4, 6. Revelation 4, And before six. the throne, there was a seal of glass, like a crystal in the midst of the throne, right about the throne. There were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. <laughs> Fate of the faithful, are you ready? Who said, out of the eater came forth meat, and out of the strong came forth sweetness? A. Solomon. B. Moses. D. David. D. Samson. They don't know. I need some help. Fate of the faithful. We have a question before you. We can help you. If it's correct, we'll take the help and get the point. Okay. After you say it. Answer is D, Samson. Tell us your riddle, they said. Let's hear it, he replied. 
Out of the eater came something sweet to eat, out of the strong something sweet. For three days they could not give the answer. Lightning round, gentlemen. How old was David when he first began to reign over Judah? How old was David when he first began to reign for Judah? 30. Hey, 30. 30. There we go. Uh, no, it should be Guardians of Eternity. What does the Lord God prefer more than sacrifices and burnt offerings? A. Obedience. B. Mercy. C. Knowledge of God. D. All of the above. Earth to Guardians, your final answer is A, obedience. All of the above. Well, so obedience is one quarter of it. They got a quarter point. Right, quarter point. <laughs> it, it's okay, they know the answer now. Yeah. <laughs> Next question. Oh, sorry, yeah, go ahead. Hosea 6. For I desired mercy and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. Fate of the faithful. The turtles that the children of Israel brought as a sin offering before the Lord were in actuality what type of animal? A. Lizards. B. Fowl. C, tortoise D, goats. I thought it was Ninja Turtles, so I don't know. Yeah. So how about these playoffs in baseball? Anybody watching any baseball? <laughs> Right, Giants are out, but I'm not interested either. Oh, that's hurtful. That's hurtful right there. I've heard A, B, and C. Which means don't go with D. B fouls. Is that your final answer? Yes. B fouls. Okay, he's off the page. Go ahead. No, you guys, Gil, go ahead. No, you go ahead, Mark. Read as follows. I'm getting better late here. And if she be not able to bring a lamb, then she shall bring two turtles or two young pigeons, the one for the burnt offering and the other for a sin offering. And the priest shall make an atonement for her, and she shall be clean. Beautiful. I believe we have time for one more question each. This will be our last round. So will that be past this lightning round question, or... Skip lightning yeah. round? No. No? Just one more each after this round. Ready? So you said one more each after the lightning round question. Okay, I'm all right. Well, now we don't have any time left. I'm better now. 
What king reigned over 127 provinces from India to Ethiopia? Ahasuerus. Letter C. So, King A. You're going with C. King A. Where are we in the questions? Here we go. Guardians of the Eternity. What kind of bread was eaten at the time of the Passover celebration? A. Bread broken by the priests. B. Bread shaped like staffs. C. Bread made without, made without yeast. D. Bread made with dark rye. Oh, they are. We'll get rid of A and D. So you can choose from C or B. Good. D for bread. D for, for bread. C. <laughs> Our answer is C. Final. C. Final answer C. Pastor Mark. Do not eat it with bread made with yeast, but for seven days eat unleavened bread, the bread of affliction, because you left Egypt in haste, so that all your, the days of your life you may, be remem you may remember the time that your departure from Egypt. Deuteronomy 16, 3. Three. Thank you. Final question. The fate of the faithful. According to John 1, what was in the beginning with God, A, Jesus, B, the Word, C, an angel, D, logic. Final answer would be D. And is this a committed final answer? Yes. I want you to pay attention to the score. This is the last question. Final answer is B. In the beginning was the Word, <laughs> and the Word was God, and the Word was, and the word was with God, was God. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Can you believe this? Yes, no, no, we can. No. Knife? We can't believe I'm trying to figure out the math here. I, oh, there we go. Okay. Good job, guys. That's why you got it. Now, wait a second. Just because you work at McDonald's doesn't make you a hamburger, right? I'm just saying. The winners today are Fate of the Faithful. Gentlemen, thank you. Thank you. But I must add, I think the winners today are all, all of us because we have these gentlemen as our leaders and our pastor. Give a big round of applause, please.
Uh, for those of you who don't know, my dad, we call him Pops around here. He is uh, a, a retired pastor who never has stopped pastoring. He continues to love on people as opportunity permits, both here at the church as well, hospitals and phone calls. Uh, it was through dad's ministry that one of those two churches that birthed this merger uh, was a strong, healthy congregation in Fresno. And through his 92 years and my 62 years, uh, he has been the most valuable asset that God has put in my life. Uh, over 30 years ago, Gil came into my world. He probably knows exactly the years. Uh, 1985. Uh, he's in his 80s, all right? And uh, Gil has just been a tremendous support person in my life, as well as for our congregation and his mission, influence, and work. Uh, but he has been a constant source of encouragement and a very stable place of wisdom that uh, we've always been able to access in our life. And I'm so, so very grateful for that. Uh, and then there is Rich and Steve and I, who uh, find ourselves in uh, the, well, yeah, somewhere around 50s. Uh, <laughs> we live our life uh, from early to mid, uh, range there, and um, and then we have our youth movement in the church. Uh, as we get to Mark and to Chris, uh, Mark is just barely stuck out of his 40s and uh, new to our staff full time this year, and Chris, who is in his early 30s, and uh, so I got 20. I had not 29. Uh, <laughs> His wife's laughing at that, yeah. <laughs> but uh, anyway, just uh, I, I'm so pleased. I'm so pleased to be able to work with each other. They are each easy to work with, and uh, I appreciate sharing those two with them. But just as a small token of, of my appreciation, uh, a small gift that you can share uh, with your wives, all right? Uh, actually, your wives, as in each of you have one, all right? <laughs>
ministry director, Tafan, that you've seen up here on stage already, our women's ministry director. Uh, let me tell you what's fun about Fawn is that she's a PK as well. And so it's great when we have some dialogues because we understand things just out of our entire life growing up. Uh, and then Milo, uh, who's our music ministry director and his team, uh, which involves not only the worship team, but Randy and Tim, Kepler, and Micah, who's uh, new to our staff, plus all of our other volunteers is what makes ministry uh, so, so very enjoyable. Let me wrap up with uh, a few additional prayer requests um, uh, that, that I do want you to be praying for. Corey was already mentioned. Uh, she's been diagnosed with, uh, I guess it's okay to say, it's been on Facebook. Uh, <laughs> so, she has shingles, all right? Uh, yeah, and so uh, it's just tough. Uh, and so we're praying for her. Uh, for Lori Bridgham, uh, I'll share with you last week the unexpected death of her husband, Stephen. Those services are still in the planning stages, and uh, it's not going to be probably until November, but we'll keep you apprised of that. For Paula Williams, I uh, heard her husband Paul attended our church. In fact, Paul gave his life to Christ. Uh, with Rouse was sitting, he raised his hand, sitting right there on the end of the pew at the end of one of our services. He was my barber for almost 45 years. Uh, and and uh, he went home to be with the Lord. Um, Claudette, when I met with her this week, that service is Saturday at 1.30 out of their mobile home park in their uh, game room facility there. Uh, when I was asking about, uh, about Paul and how he did this last year when he was homebound, he had COPD and, and other lung issues. And she said, Tim, he loved watching uh, New Hope services online. He couldn't wait for him to get posted every week. He turned them on. She said, earlier this year, uh, I, I heard him just busting up laughing. And uh, she said, I went there and said, Paul, what are you laughing at? She said, Tim? <laughs> he said, well, what's he doing now? And he said, it's Father's Day, and he's giving away cigars, all right, to fathers. Uh, What's more fun about cigars is when somebody appreciates you and brings you four of them on Pastor Christianity. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, you just thought that was hilarious. I was passing out some cigars on Father's Day. Um, but he came to the Lord right here. After I sat in his barber chair for nearly 40-some years, he started the last three years of his life sitting in our pew. Amen. And on one of those Sunday mornings, Paul Williams gave his life to Jesus Christ. And uh, I, that, that's so thrilling to me. Uh, and then last night, uh, our own Teddy Miller from our church, his sister, uh, Aileen, died at about 10, 18 last evening. Uh, she was 49 years old. She was born with Down syndrome, and for the last week has been under hospice care. 49 is a very long life for someone born with Down syndrome. Um, we know that she is better today than she's ever been in her 49 years of life and living. But do be praying for Teddy and his brother and his sisters uh, and their whole family as they go through this process. So we'll keep you informed about what's going to be happening there. And then a friend of Joe Mata and Angela from our church, Ronnie Mann, who's been at ICU. Uh, he's not been conscious since he had a massive stroke the first of the week. And I haven't heard an update since yesterday, but please be praying for them. Uh, three quick announcements that I, I wanted to bring your attention as we wrap things up today. Uh, next Sunday evening. You know, we're doing Sunday night service. We're doing it every single week. You don't have to come, but it's a great place to come and meet people on a more intimate basis. We're running between 35 and 80, all right, on Sunday night, so much smaller than a Sunday morning. Great chance to get it. When we folk had a wonderful time of uh, communion last Sunday evening. Uh, various folks preach and speak from, from night to night. But what I want to highlight for you, and that is next Sunday night, it's the 22nd. Uh, and next Sunday night, one of the kids who grew up in our high school department, he's 19. He's going to love you, right? Okay, yeah. Well, I, 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 I want to pack the room over there, all right? Uh, but Rick is going to be preaching. Cardozo, right? Cardozo. Yeah, Cardozo. Rick Cardozo is going to be preaching. It's his first time to preach outside of the high school room, all right, to just high school kids. And uh, leads God's called him into ministry. So we're going to give him a chance to cut his teeth. Uh, with some adults, so uh, I, I'd love to pack the room next Sunday night. Uh, I remember my first sermon, all right? Uh, and, and so hope you come next Sunday evening. Encourage one of our young and upcoming uh, young men in our church as they pursue what they believe is God's call in their life. Then a couple of weeks later, on the 5th of November, a very special Sunday evening service. It will not be over at the bridge like most of the market will be here in the sanctuary because we're going to be ordaining two of these men on the stage. 
uh, Mark Addis and Chris Bishop are going to be ordained. They've been licensed for the past two years. Uh, we approved their ordination, and there we're going to have an ordination service. Some of you said, I've never heard of such a thing. Then plan on coming, November. This is a big moment for those of us who go into ministry. Uh, this is not only the recognition of God's call into ministry, but also the hand of the church's approval of God's call in your life to be engaged in ministry. So that will be a very special Sunday evening service on November the 5th. And then on the Sunday, November the 19th, the Sunday morning during all three of our services, is going to be a special time uh, as, as we hear about and we're going to raise funds for a ministry called uh, From Fulsom to Forgiven. That is Tim Kepler's prison ministry. Our worship leader, two Sundays every month. Uh, as you, many of you know, Tim Kepler spent some time at Folsom Prison. Uh, found the Lord Jesus, changed his life. He's never gone back to prison to stay. But he frequently goes back to prison to share the liberating truth of the gospel. And he is wanting to acquire, which would be a great benefit to many of us with Prison Fellowship who go in for yard events. Uh, he's wanting to provide a, a ministry vehicle that is a large truck that you just simply pull it into the prison grounds. You drop the front, you drop the two sides, and your stage is already set up and your sound equipment is already ready. For those of us who go into prison ministries for yard events, they're always late, and the reason they're always late starting is because it takes forever to process through the prison yards all the various people that have to set up and the equipment they have. If it could all be driven in in one piece, and then nothing's even unloaded, it's just opened up, and we plug in, and it's set and ready to go. And that would be absolutely incredible. And so we're going to have a very special service with Tim sharing a bit of his story. And he is bringing a guest with him that day. His name is Dean Johnson. Um, Dean Johnson is late 20s. He's about 6 foot 2. He looks like that guy right there. <laughs> Take my face off that body and put beans on it. And that is Dean Johnson. And uh, Dean can crush Pepsi cans, you know, in his hands. He can tear phone books. Do, do, do you all know? Do you know what a phone book is? <laughs> <laughs> a, a real phone book. He'll, he'll tear, and then he'll share his story. It will be absolutely wonderful. So, wanted you to have those dates in mind. Would you join with me as we pray and we wrap up our time? Our Father, I love you. I thank you so much for. For the call that you've placed on all of our lives. And Father, for some of us, you've, you've put us in a place of ministry to others. And we say thank you for that privilege. And thank you for the expression of appreciation today. Father, we trust you with needs for these families that we've shared with you who recently experienced the absence of loved ones in their lives. But we rejoice with the fact that though they may be absent from us, we know they are forever present with you. And that gives us comfort beyond our wildest imagination. So we thank you for the comfort that you bring. And however you can use us to be of hope and help and encouragement to these families, may you find us ready, willing, and available. We trust you for all of this and so much more. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen.